Hey guys, what's happening? Um, it is a late Saturday night. I've been working on the shed for the last couple days. I'm trying to get things arranged and I keep getting requests and emails saying, hey, show us your shed, show us what it is, how it was put together, and especially the shop tools and things you use. And, and I will get to that, but I've been hanging lights. I've been doing all kinds of things. And this is one of those episodes we're going to put in the playlist called Coveter's Paradise. Coveter's Paradise. Coveter's Corner. Anyway, there's a link up there. I'm getting rummy and the crickets are out there putting me to sleep. Anyway, what is the episode all about? Well, it's about one of the coolest things you've ever seen. Hey, listen up. All right. What is it that's so cool? Well, it's not all my Lutherism books or all my coffee cans and other cans that I make guitars or microphones out of, and it's not all my Camacho boxes. Ooh, look at all them. And it's not my Patron boxes. Um, yeah, it's not that really cool custom-made Curtis Novak gold foil pickup, and it's not that Camacho box that's made to look like a Victor Rat Trapper. Yeah, it's not even Mrs. Olsen. It's way cooler than that. It is... Ooh, it's the bench I made. It's got a guitar vice on it. And other cool stuff. So, let's get closer and take a look at what I did here. Okay, I gotta see how the camera angle is here, but... I think some of y'all have figured out already that I just use like a Hollywood anvil case for my setup. And I've got a couple of them. I can stack them. I can raise the level to work. And then I just take one of these moving blankets. You can get these from Harbor Freight. They're pretty cheap. And um, I just cover this up so I've got a soft surface. You don't want to scratch up guitars. Guitars I work on, it really doesn't matter. In fact, they look better if they're scratched up. But I got this going on. Let's adjust the camera a little bit. There we go. And then I typically just put a piece of wood on here so I can drill and, and, and make pilot holes if I need to. I had a couple of bean bags, which are just, yeah, virtually just bags with beans in them. I keep a couple of those. And then... I've had a neck stand. Um, it flips around. It does this and whatever. Um, but this is a pretty good way to work if you're just starting out. You've got this, and then you've got a couple of neck cutoff pieces that you can kind of stack up. And then, of course, keep a supply of rags around. And that way you could pad everything. And this worked pretty good for me for a while. But then I decided, you know what? I'm going to kind of step into one of these vices all right so this uh, actually comes in a couple of different options the first thing is you would order the vice um, and it just basically it's cool it works really well um, it's lined I think with neoprene you can just put your guitar neck in here you could put it like this. You could do anything you want. You could basically um, stand a guitar up, mask this whole thing off, and spray um, a sunburst if you wanted to. Uh, but the main piece is this vise, and it comes with this speed handle on it and everything, and it's very sturdy. Um, the next thing is it has this board here, um, and it's got parts trays. Um, you can put a strong magnet in the parts tray here, and it's got all kinds of things for your tools, holes to put. Say, for example, you have a Milwaukee nut driver. This thing is awesome, by the way. Um, so is this. I think I've given you links to this stuff before. If not, I'll try to do that. 
down below. But anyway, I can stand this up here like this. So um, it also has this board that's adjustable up and down. I don't know if you can see here. Let's move this a little bit. It's got really easy to move uh, adjusters. You can move this up and down, one on the bottom, one on the top, and set your guitar up here. Um, but the way to position a guitar on here is really versatile. And then finally, if you look over here, where's my pointer when I need it? You've got a optional tool tray up here. This part of it's magnetic. And so you can just clip your tools on here. You can put the things you want to use here, like so. But again, there are three basic parts that you have to order. There is the vise, the attached tool tray, and this board here, tool board, parts containers, um, and it comes with this support for the body of the guitar. Okay, so I'm not sponsored by Stumac or anything. Uh, I'll tell you what, if you're going to buy from Stumac, that membership they have where shipping is free is a good thing. And they did work with me because I decided I was going to buy this. And then after the fact, I figured out, okay, I want to buy the stand and these other things. So they worked with me um, and were very friendly. And I think that um, the stand part is probably the thing that I would want to change a little bit if I could. And I will tell you about that. But while we're here... Um, you can see that there's a speed handle on this stuff right here. So you spin this in and out. This stuff is very uh, heavy duty. It's not, it's, it's something that would last you a lifetime. Um, you've got this metal tray underneath here, or this metal piece here that is magnetic. Um, and it all fits together really, really well. Um, but Again, if I could change something, it would be the stand, and here's why. Okay, guys, sorry about the lighting. It's not that good, but I think we'll get through this. Uh, I wanted to tell you that underneath all of this setup is one of these wheeled carts that has wheels that spin around so you can steer it. I can move this all around the shop, and um, this is actually, this cart is metal with a wooden uh, insert inside the frame that's thick. It's kind of about two-thirds the size of something you'd have at Home Depot, one of those flat carts with the handle on the end. It's about a third narrow and a third less in length. But the anvil case that's hiding under here, right here, um, under this cloth, took up enough space on the cart and then left me enough to put the base of this vise which is on this pedestal. Again, this is an option that you buy by itself. Um, it is heavy duty. It's reinforced and it mounted here with four big lag screws and I put lock washers on those. Um, so that's not going anywhere. Um, now let's come up to this part. Let me see where I can see in the camera. Yeah, there is a speed handle right here that cinches down on the outer tube and then this inner tube is slightly smaller there's a handy speed adjustment here uh, this screws into a number of holes there's one right there um, there's one here and there's another one down in here so you can raise this up about a foot and a half if you want to uh, there's a bearing on here so when you turn the vise when you turn it yeah it, it coasts on that bearing right there if you can see it. Yeah, you just simply push this in and pull this out and you can uh, get this in and out and adjust it. And then, of course, when you're done, you tighten it up with that speed wheel. Now, if there's something I could change, it would be this. And we're going to start by changing the height of the camera. Okay, let's check the camera angle. Again, this is the basic vise. 
Um, and remember that I ordered this stuff separately, so that was part of my problem. But when it came in, it didn't have the bolt that runs here up through the top mount through the board, the tool board, and into the body of the vise right in there. Now there's threads that go up into here. There's a big washer that acts as a bushing so this can rotate. And then there's a flat spot right in here on the shaft of this bolt that allows you to tighten this up. Now, there's a little design issue if you can see it right here. This plate is necessary. It's on both sides and it makes this sturdy. You don't want this collapsing. So it's tack welded on there really nice. But the problem is, is there's a speed adjuster on here and this is so long. I don't think this needs to be as long as it is. You can see that. But if you start spinning the speed adjuster, it will hit this and you can't tighten it up all the way. So what I had to do was put a spacer in here, which is this <laughs> metal slide so I'm one metal slide short so I have 15 and <laughs> laying around now but I put that there and so what happens is once you get this adjusted you tighten this up and everything is okay but this right here needs a little bit of a design uh, change where it was curved out or or something here because it actually hits this um, I had to have them send it to me. Of course, customer service is excellent. They didn't complain at all about sending me, and they made sure that I was happy in the end. So um, the stand, I think, was made for another kind of a vice, and I think that they're still working out a couple design issues to make it applicable to just this. But you saw how easily it spins around. So let me get the camera set up, and let's finish this out. Now the first thing I want to remind you of is, short of having this tool tray out here, this, this tool tray only adds a couple of inches, but the beauty of this thing is, it really takes up the space of a guitar. If you were to center up a guitar on your finger and spin it around, however long the guitar is, is how much this thing takes up. Now. I can be working on something on the guitar. Maybe I need to do some work down on the bench down here. Can you see here? And so I just swing this out of the way, do what I need to do down here. And then once I'm done doing that, I just flip this and swing this back around. Now, um, once you get this thing where you want, those speed wheels are really easy to adjust and it puts tension on the pedestal where it doesn't move at all or it moves uh, easily. Um, if I want to work on a guitar where I want to lean it down a little bit, I just spin these like this. Let's see what the camera's doing, you see there? I can just do this like so, adjust this. Bottom one's the same thing turn this any way I want. Now you got to remember that the jaws on the vise are a little bit offset off this board. So um, you don't want to just set things up here all sloppy um, because it'll fall off. But once you get this thing in here and it's secure, I really don't want this guitar falling on the floor. So if I want to work on it, I just clamp it in there. You guys have seen these work and it's not going anywhere. I just move it out of the way. Of course I want to watch my swing doesn't hit anything but if I want to work on this guitar and I need to let it down a little bit I've got a hole open here. I can let this down a little bit. It's highly versatile. Um, I can move this like this. I've got my tools wherever I need them. They're over here. Um, the nice, the really nice thing about being able to pivot this out of the way any way you want is sometimes I'm doing something 
that involves needing the space. Because I'm hammering or do something, let me give you an example. Okay, here's a perfect example. Let's say I want to fret the neck of a guitar. And I have this up here. I've got something waiting to dry or something. I just swing this out of the way and I can go to work with my fret press like this. This is very versatile. I like having the ability to have this additional workspace. This is just completely out of the way. You can tell up here that I could put anything I want in this tool chest or this tool bench or this part, the tool board. I could put parts in here. I could put frets in here. I could put my fret holder here. I can clip clamps on here. I can do just about anything I want. So this thing is highly versatile in the way it swings out of the way. I don't know how much I would like it if it was just by itself and I didn't have this additional area. Okay, I want to make sure I got the right angle here. Let's say that I need the vise to be at a different angle than just to be at a 90 degree angle. Let's say I want it over here. Let's say I'm doing something where I want the guitar to be sitting up at an angle like this and I really don't need the body board. Let's say I just want to do this. I want to work on it like this, like so. This thing is very versatile. I just turn. I'm getting ahead of myself here. I can just loosen up this adjuster down here if you can see this and turn this any way I want. I could put it here like this and then I just tighten that up and lock it in again that spacer takes it below from being locked locked and then I just spin it around this way now I have my tool tool um, tray here um, but it's highly highly versatile another thing um, this this um, board here that supports things you can set it way way down just by turning these these speed adjusters are cool there's another one under here. I can um, work on any number of guitars. I could work on a cigar box guitar, a coffee can guitar, anything I build. I'm just going to adjust the angle of the jaws a little bit. And let's say I want to do a tutorial on something I'm doing. I've kind of worked myself into a bind here. Um, I just have to reach across like that. And then I could set my camera up and film down on the work. So yeah, highly, highly versatile. Okay guys, I don't think I've ever started or ended an episode from this angle, but let's go ahead and do that. Um, I would definitely buy this again. I wouldn't be out trying to find the pieces from some broker that's gonna get it to me a little bit cheaper. I do think that the pedestal that comes with this will develop as they sell a few because um, I am uh, I'm hoping that some of the mod little modifications I had to make won't really be that necessary. I do like the fact that I can move things around. I can put uh, my soldering set up here. Um, I'm going to do an episode about this guitar. It's going to be called band-aid for Bob that went out on the road with Bob Log and there's a couple things I want to move around. The piezo is giving it horrendous feedback and then we're going to put a Curtis Novak pickup on it. We're going to pull the 65 silver tone off of it which is going to leave some holes in the license plate. So we got some more Wheaties 1953 and 1954 license plates from bicycles to fix this up with but this is going to be really, really handy for me to adjust, see how easy it is to adjust whatever I want, soldering or whatever. Um, if you're going to order from Stumac, again, even if you do it once, that deal for free shipping with that membership that I think is $49 or whatever is completely worth it if all you do is buy this. If you make the decision to buy one of these, I would think about... Um, I wouldn't want to just put this pedestal in the shop 
in one spot I want to be able to move it and that's what's nice about this whole cart I could move it the way to the other end of the shop just by wheeling it around so I like that mobility um, I don't know that I'd like a, a vice mounted to a bench um, I think that there is room on this uh, setup for me for example to put a little nut vice here um, uh, there's all kinds of things I can do with this but Again, the takeaways are, don't be surprised that the pedestal isn't just perfect. Um, you're going to have to put a space or something in. Uh, but the parts are really durable. The whole thing is ultra adjustable. And I would definitely buy it again. Again, my only mistake was to buy it in pieces. And through that process, I ended up with some hardware missing. The minute they knew they sent it to me, just like that, you really can't beat Stu Mac in terms of customer service, that's for sure. Okay, guys, I have a lot to do here. This guitar has got to be done in a couple days, and then it's going to go on a little road trip down into Palm Springs where it's going to be literally hotter than hell, and um, we're going to get it in Bob's hands, and we'll get, get this uh, feedback issue, and... Uh, Make, our, make sure our sustain and everything gets better with this thing. We're going to do an episode on, again, it'll be called Band-Aid on Bob. I'll give you a link to it right up there, right about now once that episode is done. So, hey, I'm going to give you a link below to uh, this setup um, and the individual parts and the whole thing. And then you can kind of look at it. There's a couple of videos that Stu Mac did too about this to kind of tell you how it works and uh, how it was developed. So, hey, I'm glad I got to share this with you. It's been sitting in my garage for a little bit. It took me a while to get it out to the shed. But um, if you haven't, give me a like, give me a subscribe, and Send me an email if you like this kind of thing uh, where I'm actually showing you what's in my shed and my tools and, and how they work and stuff. If you like that kind of thing, let me know. And I'm going to turn this camera off. Maybe change my shirt so you think it's a different day. Get to work on Bob's guitar. See you soon.